teacher back with another video on easy math okay in previous video on sunday we discussed about functions some inverse trigonometrical functions and modulus function and gradation integer function okay today let's continue that by fractional part and some other important functions first fractional part <music> What is a fractional part? Okay, you know fractions, right? Here, fractional part means that is the re representing all the values of x in form of and proper fractions. Okay, what are proper fractions? Numerator less than the denominator, so they will be less than one. Okay, we learned about greatest integer function, right? And if we convert x to the greatest integer function, some fractional value will be deleted. Okay, where will that fractional value go? What we should call that fractional value? For that, we have the function called as fractional part function. The fractional value which we take off to get the greatest integer value is the fractional part function. It will be in between 0 and 1. Okay, there are some, as you can see here, x, fractional part of x. If x is in between 0 and 1, fractional part of x is x. If x is in between 1 and 2, fractional part of x is x minus 1. Similarly, if it is in between 2 and 3, it is x minus 2, minus 1 and 0, it is x plus 1, minus 2 and minus 1, it is x plus 2. As you can see, this is the graph of fractional part x. There are some properties of fractional part. What are those properties? Okay, fractional part of x is x if x is in between 0 and 1. Okay, how is this possible? It is in between 0 and 1, then how it will be x? Okay, for 0, if you take the greatest integer, it is 0. So, the fractional part will be 0. If we take in between 0 and 1, for example, 0 0.5, and then the fraction, the greatest integer of that is 0. So, the fractional part will be 0 0.5. So, if x is in between 0 and 1, the fractional part of that function will be x. Okay. The second property is fractional part of x is 0 if x belongs to integer means if x is an integer fractional part is 0 because for x belongs to integer the greatest integer function will be the same integer okay the third property is fractional part of minus x is 1 minus fractional part of x if x is not an integer because if x is an integer it is 0 and the fractional part of x plus or minus integer is equal to fractional part of x plus or minus integer. Y is equal to least integer x. Okay, it is denoted with x and half square brackets or with x in the braces. This indicates the integral part of x which is nearest and greater integer to x okay what is it in case of greatest integer function it is nearest and smaller integer to x but here it is opposite nearest and greater integer to x we can also call this as ceiling of x okay in greatest integer we will call it as floor of x okay this picture tells you what are the differences between greatest integer and least integer and greatest integer least integer of 2.3203 is nothing but 3 and least integer of 0 0.23 is 1 least integer in general n is less than x is less than or equal to n plus 1 means that is least integer of x will be n plus 1 Greatest integer of x will be n. In this table and in this graph, you can understand about least integer. Okay, in this graph, 
the dark dot represents value is shaken and the light dot represents value is neglected. The property is least integer of x is equal to x is equal to greatest integer of x if x is an integer. Least integer of x plus l is equal to greatest integer of x plus l is equal to least integer of x plus l if i belongs to integer. And the third property is greatest integer function converts x is equal to i plus f into i, right? While the least integer converts to i plus 1. Here we all know this. This is not a important property. And x is equal to x is equal to least integer of x plus fractional part of x minus 1. Where zero, fractional part of x is in between 0 and 1. As we all know it. It only lies between 0 and 1. Least integer of minus x is minus least integer of x if x is an integer. And minus least integer of x minus 1 if x is not an integer. Least integer of x minus least integer of minus x is equal to. Okay, we can prove this from a whole property, right? If x is an integer, it will be least integer of x. If x is not an integer, it will be 2 least integer of x minus 1. And least integer of x is greater than or equal to n. If least integer of x is greater than or equal to n, then x will be greater than n minus 1. And if x is greater than, least integer of x is greater than n, then x will be greater than n. And if least integer of x is less than or equal to n, x will be less than or equal to n. If least integer of x is less than n, then x will be less than or equal to n minus 1. Our 11th property is least integer, least integer of least integer of x by n is equal to least integer of x by n. Okay, this is somewhat confusing. And least integer of n plus 1 by 2 plus least integer of n plus 2 by 4 plus least integer of n plus 4 by 8 plus and so on is equal to 2 into n minus 1. And least integer of x is equal to greatest integer of x if x is an integer or greatest integer of x plus 1 if x is not an integer. And least integer of x plus least integer of 1 x plus 1 by x, least integer of x plus 2 by n plus and so on until least integer of x plus n minus 1 by 1 is least integer of nx plus n minus 1. Okay, now let's see an example on finding the domain. Let's take an example. That is, the example is find the domain of f of x is equal to sine inverse 3 minus 2x by 5 plus square root of 3 minus x. Okay, now we should find the domain of this. How can we find the domain? The domain means all possible values of x. Okay, here sine inverse function is only possible if Sine inverse alpha is only possible if alpha is in between minus 1 and 1, right? And square root function is possible if the value inside the square root is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, how to solve this? Let's see the solution. As we discussed, sine inverse alpha is possible if alpha is in between minus 1 and 1. So, 3 minus 2x by 5 will be, will be in between minus 1 and 1. Okay, if you multiply with 5, it becomes minus 5 is less than or equal to 3 minus 2x is less than or equal to 5. Okay, and here we should have subtract 3 from all the 3 terms. Means minus 5 minus 3 is less than or equal to 3 minus 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 5 minus 3. Okay, minus 5 minus 3 means minus 8. Here 3 cancels out, you will get minus 2 and 5 minus 3, 2. Minus 8 is less than or equal to minus 2x is less than or equal to 2. Okay, if we multiply with minus 1, then the function, then the inequality reverse means 
minus 2 will be less than or equal to 2x is less than or equal to 8. Okay, why is this? Because if we take the positive integers, they are 1, 2, 3, 4. I mean, they will be increasing. Negative, negative integers, they are minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and they will be decreasing. Right? So, based on this, based on that, if you multiply with minus 1, the inequality will be reversed. If we divide with 2, we will get minus 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4. Okay, let us imagine this is as equation 1. Then, what are the possible values of square root of 3 minus x? Means what is the domain of root 3 minus x? Okay, for square root to be possible, 3 minus x should be greater than or equal to 0. And if we send x to the other side, 3 should be greater than or equal to x. x will be less than or equal to 3. It is equation 2. What we will get if we combine these two equations? x should be less than 3. Based on first equation, it should be greater than minus 1. And less than 4. Okay. That is less than 4. This is less than 3. If we approximate those two, you will get x should be less than or equal to 3. So, minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. Okay. So, the domain of f of x is minus 1 comma 3. Okay. This is the way to solve for domain. We should use all properties and all inequalities to find the domain. Okay, guys. This is for today's video. If you like the video, hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, ring that bell icon, hit notification, and release a new video. If you have any doubts, comment down below. I will answer them in the next video.